What's up YouTube? Have you been wondering if 2023 is finally the year to go ahead and ditch Adobe and go to some alternative software? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator, and today we're talking all about one of my favorite topics, which is how to leave Adobe. So here's the deal. We've talked about this before several times. So what's different this year? Well, there's three things that I wanna highlight this year, and that is changes to Affinity, a big change to DaVinci, and a price increase from Adobe. So let's go ahead and let's talk about that. Okay, so if you're new around here, you may not know that there are alternatives to the Adobe Creative software. There are software that you can use that can do the same things that cost only a fraction of the price and so this is something that I've been talking about for years and whether or not people can make the shift now we've talked about this a lot so you can go ahead and check out some of the other videos if you want to hear all of the pros and cons I've done comparisons of the software but there's some big changes that happened in 2022 that make the outlook into 2023 different now the first one is affinity now if you want to replace the graphic design apps in adobe suite basically photoshop illustrator and indesign then the affinity suite works really well because they have competitor apps to all of those affinity photo affinity designer and affinity publisher which are really really good high quality apps but what happened in 2022 to these apps well something big happened because version two was finally released. Now version two was all three of these apps getting major updates with new features and better code so that they just run better and better streamlined. And also a major development, which was Affinity Publisher coming to the iPad. Now this is the very first time a desktop publishing app that's a real desktop publishing app has actually come to the iPad. So that's big. Adobe hasn't even made squeaks about InDesign coming to the iPad. I can't even imagine what would happen with how bad Photoshop has come to the iPad. I can't imagine how bad InDesign on the iPad would be, but Affinity Publisher on the iPad is amazing. So these version two releases were a major update for Affinity. And it was our first time seeing how Affinity's pricing would change as they released new updates. And they did not go to a subscription. They remained with a single purchase license. In fact, they even introduced the new universal license. And I made video all about the new Affinity program. So you can go ahead and check that out if you need more information. But that's one of the major changes for coming into 2023 that happened at the end of 2022. And that is a big change because it just means that these apps are getting better. This is a stronger ecosystem. And especially with Affinity Publisher on the iPad, that just makes the whole thing better and more amazing. And the first time you can do everything on the iPad using a suite. You can't do that if you use Adobe. The next thing also has to do with the iPad and that is DaVinci Resolve coming to the iPad. Wow, that's amazing. DaVinci Resolve came to the iPad right at the end of 2022, and that changes my entire outlook on 2023. If you are an iPad person, you just need to ditch Adobe. Adobe's apps are useless, basically, on the iPad when compared to the competitors. And Blackmagic just dropped DaVinci onto the iPad, and it works really well, even though it's brand new. There's a, been a few hiccups, and I'm going to do a video all about that, but for the most part, it works really well. And using this special hack that some people found out, which I made a video about, you can actually bring the full functionality of DaVinci Resolve to the iPad, even though they started it out just using two of the modules. So that is pretty amazing. And it really stands in contrast to Adobe who brought only Adobe Premiere Rush, which is this really basically piece of garbage editing program to the iPad. So if you're an iPad person, 2023 is the year for you. Just go ahead and leave Adobe because if you're working on an iPad, this is the best way. Of course, Procreate's been on the iPad forever. Procreate didn't do anything major in 2022. So that's the reason that they're not on this list, but Procreate is the best drawing app on the iPad. You've never really wanted to use Photoshop on the iPad for drawing. So that's it. DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, big deal, very exciting, and just shows Blackmagic's commitment to continuing to make the best video editing experience possible. Because not only can you edit on the iPad, but you can move between your desktop and your iPad. And that's something that Adobe just can't even offer. Okay, third thing that we want to talk about for 2023 is that in 2022, Adobe had a price increase. Now, this is not weird. This is pretty normal because it had been a while since they'd done a price increase and almost everybody increased their prices during 2022. Inflation was really high. And so it makes sense that they increased it, except that they were already charging so much for the Creative Cloud. Most people's subscriptions went up by about $2 a month from $53 a month to $55 a month. And so that's a not insignificant price increase. And so if you're looking for a reason to leave, now's a good time to do it. Adobe just continues to require more money and provide less value. 
Now, I want to be perfectly transparent here. Affinity also increased their prices during 2022. Like I said, almost everybody did. But I feel like Affinity delivered on value and they're only charging you once, whereas Adobe didn't deliver on value and they want to charge you every month for that. So those are the three major things that I think are making a difference here coming out of 2022 into 2023 and why it's a, probably a good time for a lot of people to just go ahead and leave Adobe. Now, let's just address a couple of reasons why you might not be able to do this. The first one is Lightroom. Now, there are some competitors to Lightroom that people really like. I haven't really liked any other uh, batch photo editing app as much as Lightroom. So you might be stuck there, but in which case you can just go with the photography plan. You're totally fine. You can get Lightroom and Photoshop for 10 bucks a month. That's a lot cheaper than $55 a month. And then use the alternative apps for everything else. The other thing is if you work in an environment where you have to deliver Adobe files, be that AI files or INDD files especially, then you're going to have a hard time leaving Adobe. If you primarily work with PSDs, well, most apps can handle PSDs, including Affinity Photo and Procreate. And so you can probably do it if your main work is with PSDs or EPS or SVGs, you'll be good to leave Adobe. But if you're working with those files from Illustrator, AI, or InDesign, INDD files, then you're going to have a problem. On the video side, people have been round tripping from Premiere through DaVinci Resolve for forever. So I don't feel like this is a big deal. I mean, it's annoying for sure, but if you're on the video side, you should be able to have a workflow where you work with DaVinci Resolve and you're working with people who use Premiere Pro if you have to. And so that's the basics of it. That's where I think this really comes down to it. The only other thing that you might consider is if you use a lot of Adobe's fonts, then it might be worth it to you. If you like integration with Adobe Stock, which is also really overpriced, but if you need that, then you're going to want that as well. So there's a few kind of side cases where there might be features that you really need, but that's the basics of it. Now I want to hear what you think. What do you think going into 2023? How do you see your relationship with Adobe changing? Are you going to leave them? Have you already left them? Are you happy with the way the alternative apps are going? Tell me what you think about that. And if you need more information, be sure to check out my courses on many of these apps linked in the description below. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.